Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we shall continue the anesthesiology playlist. It's time for some basics of anesthesia. Get the foundations right, and you will cruise through anesthesiology like a sharp knife in warm butter. Let's answer the question of the previous video. Why do we give epinephrine with local anesthetics? And here is the answer. First, don't forget that epinephrine is a vasoconstrictor. It can prolong the effects of local anesthesia. Oh, I don't get it. Like, if you give a vasoconstrictor, what's going to happen? Oh, you injected the anesthesia, but that vessel is constricted. Therefore, the local anesthetic has to stay here. It's not going to diffuse all over the place and go to the blood and go to other parts of your body. It will stay here to do its job, which is anesthesia. So I'm prolonging the effect of local anesthesia. Epinephrine is an alpha-1 agonist. It's alpha-2 alpha agonist. So alpha-1, I will vasoconstrict. Alpha-2 is anti-sympathetic. I'll decrease release of substance P at the spinal cord, which decreases pain. A wise man once said, no pain, no gain. But the anesthesiologist says no pain no pain anesthetics are either general or local there is also regional but let's keep it simple stupid how do general anesthetics work they are usually pro GABA oh oh like pro GABA and GABA is inhibitory oh so general anesthetics will inhibit me yeah make me calm down and they actually knock me unconscious how about local anesthetics they are usually inhibitors of the sodium channels they block the sodium channels okay and the sodium channel was responsible for what it was responsible for depolarization which is activation but when you give local anesthetics sodium channels may they rest in peace will not work now you will end up with inhibition in my glorious physiology playlist, specifically in the action potential video, I've give you some nuggets of medicine. And nugget number four, four was, during rest, potassium is leaving. Potassium is positive. If the positive is leaving, the inside will become more negative, which is inactivation. But during excitation or activation or depolarization, sodium is coming in, making the inside positive. And when the inside is positive, we call this activation or polarization or action potential but what if chloride is coming in oh chloride is negative oh the inside is going to be negative this is inactivation general anesthetics are usually pro gaba and gaba is inhibitory how because it allows for chloride influx chloride is going to enter into my neuron causing inactivation and that's how we calm you down. This is how we knock you unconscious. Oh, by the way, please watch the previous video in this playlist to make sense of it all. Because unless we learn from history, we are doomed to repeat it, baby. Okay, general anesthetics, what the flip are we trying to accomplish here? A state of reversible, controlled unconsciousness. Beautiful. How do you do it? Amnesia, analgesia, muscle paralysis, and sedation. What the flip is amnesia? Memory loss. What is analgesia? No pain, no pain. Muscle paralysis by a neuromuscular blocker and sedation. Calm down. What are the stages of general anesthesia? Okay, so I gave you a general anesthetic. First thing you'll experience is no pain. Next, you will get excited. Oh, to the point of delirium. Third, you get surgical anesthesia. We actually operate here. But if the doctor was a doofus and gave you too much anesthetic, this can lead to medullary depression, which can kill you. Analgesia, excitement, surgical anesthesia, medullary depression. Analgesia, describe it. Analgesia, okay, of course, depends on the drug. There is amnesia and there is euphoria. And then you get excited to the point of being delirious. And you can even get angry and anxious and violent. Stage three is the sweet spot, surgical anesthesia. You are unconscious, irregular breathing with decreased eye movement. But medullary depression is respiratory arrest, cardiac depression, cardiac arrest, no eye movement. So I want to perform a major surgery. I'll give you a general anesthetic. First, analgesia, then excitement, then surgical anesthesia. I'm operating here. Okay, then what? Then I want to wake you up after surgery. Okay, so you go from here all the way up here. You pass again by the same stages from the anesthesia to the excitement to the analgesia, and then you wake up. Welcome back home. General anesthetics could be inhaled or intravenous. Inhaled, you breathe it in. Intravenous is in your veins. Don't forget to add neuromuscular blockers to the general anesthetic. Oh, what's the purpose of the general anesthetic? To knock you out, to make you unconscious. What's the purpose of the neuromuscular blocker? Oh, to paralyze you. Why do you want to do this? It's easier to intubate. And if it's an abdominal surgery, for example, 
I do not want your muscles to twitch and contract whenever I touch them, so I'd better make them paralyzed. Inhaled general anesthetics include nitrous oxide, the first anesthetic to be discovered in the history of the world. And then you have the chlorofluorocarbons, including halothane, isoflurane, influrane, disflurane, sevoflurane, etc. Historically, we had chlorocarbons, such as chloroform, but then we discovered that they are hepatotoxic, cardiotoxic, and they are also toxic to your lungs. So we stopped. Important concepts, minimal alveolar concentration or MAC. Not to be confused with the membrane attack complex, part of your complement system or McDonald's. It's also a Windows alternative if you have some money. The minimal alveolar concentration is the concentration, no kidding, of gas in the lungs, capable of preventing movement in half of the patients in response to pain or a surgical stimulus. That's the bare minimum. This is scorched earth. I do not just want 50% of my patients to be unconscious. I want 99.999% of them to be unconscious, but this is just the minimum. And of course, this is a measure of the potency of the inhaled anesthetic. It is analogous. It is synonymous to ED50. What the flip is that? The effective dose 50, which means the effective dose in 50% of the population studied. Okay, medicos, let's say that a specific inhaled anesthetic has a higher MAC. What does that mean? It means that this drug has a lower potency because it requires a higher concentration in order to paralyze the same amount of people. So the higher the MAC, the lower the potency. Consider this. Imagine that you have anesthetic A and anesthetic B. Okay. Anesthetic A requires a concentration of 10 to knock you unconscious. Anesthetic B requires a concentration of 100 to knock you unconscious. Which one is more potent? A. The MAC values are additive. So if you're giving three drugs together, you add MAC1 plus MAC2 plus MAC3. More basic concepts. Here is a graph and this is a plot of the plasma concentration of the drug on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. I gave you a certain drug and here was the plasma concentration and then increase, decrease, it, it's, it's fluctuating, got some fluctuation action going. What's the name of the upper limit? Maximum toxic concentration. What's the name of the lower limit? Minimum effective concentration. Between them is what? The therapeutic window. If I am giving you a medication, I would like to stay within the therapeutic window. If I go up too far, oh baby, this is toxic. If I give you too little, ah, it's useless. It's not going to give you the desired effect. What is the therapeutic index, mathematically speaking? Okay, in animal studies, it has a definition. In human studies, it has another definition. Let's start with animal studies. Lethal dose 50 over effective dose 50. What the flip does that mean? The lethal dose in 50% of the population of mice, for example, over the effective dose in 50% of the population in mice. Let's say we have two drugs, A and B. All right, the effective dose in 50% of the mice was 10 milligrams per deciliter, and the lethal dose was 50. In other words, if you give 50 milligrams of deciliter, you will kill half of the mice population. So what is the therapeutic index or the therapeutic window of this drug? 50 over 10 equals 5. Excellent. 5 what was the measuring unit? Nothing, because this is concentration over concentration, so they will cancel each other out, doofus. How about drug B? Oh, the effective dose 50 was 10. Lethal dose 50 was 1000. What's the therapeutic window here? 100. So which drug is safer, drug A or drug B? Um, drug B, of course, because it has a wider therapeutic window. Drug A is very dangerous, relatively speaking, because if you increase the dose from 10 to 50, you will kill half the mice. But here, if you increase the dose from 10 to 50, ah, no one cares. This is how they do it in animal studies. They keep raising the dose and raising the dose and raising the dose until they euthanize the animal. But of course, we cannot raise the dose until we kill you. So we will replace the lethal dose with the toxic dose. It's the dose at which 50% of the human population will suffer toxicity, not death. Okay, medicosis, I get it. There is another concept known as the margin of safety. And this is the lethal dose. One over the effective dose 99. 
lethal dose in 1% of the population over effective dose in 99% of the population, and that's your margin of safety, which makes Benjamin Graham so happy. So let's try this. This is an experiment in animals. Oh, right, here's dose and here's the percentage of the individuals responding. We have discovered that when we give the dose of 100 micrograms per kilogram, you will get response in 50% of the mouse population. But when you raise the dose to 400, you get death in 50% of mice. So what the flip is the therapeutic window here? Oh, let's see, 400 over 100 equals four. You get both numbers from the x-axis, not the y-axis. Another concept, blood gas partition coefficient. It's a measure of the solubility of the freaking anesthetic in the blood. Okay, how soluble are you? Are you more soluble or less soluble? What does a higher blood gas partition coefficient mean? It means that more of the freaking drug has been dissolved in the blood. Wonderful. What does a higher blood solubility mean? It means that the anesthetic will take a longer time to work in the brain. You know why? Because blood is what? Blood is made of plasma and plasma is basically water. If something is very soluble in blood, it means it is water soluble. And of course, your blood brain barrier is a membrane made of lipid. Oh, so if you are water soluble, you are less lipid soluble. If you are dissolving in blood like a charm, you will have a hard time reaching the brain because there are no solutions in life. There are only trade-offs. If you are more thin, you are less obese and vice versa. Two sides of the same coin. Here's a glorious sentence. The higher the blood gas partition coefficient, the more soluble the anesthetic in the blood, which means it will take longer for it to reach and work in the brain. What does a low blood to gas ratio mean? It means after I give you the anesthetic and finish the surgery, you will recover sooner from the anesthesia. You wanna know why? Because if the ratio is low, so blood is low relative to the gas. Okay, what does that mean? I'm not soluble in blood. Oh, so you are less water soluble. Therefore, you are more lipid soluble. You will go to the brain quickly and recover quickly, just like that. General anesthetics, we have the nitrous oxide on one hand and the chlorofluorocarbons on the other hand. Halothane, dysfluorane, isoflurane, influrane, sevoflurane, etc. Each one has a MAC and has a blood to gas ratio. The higher the MAC, the lower the potency. A low blood to gas ratio means a quick recovery from the anesthetic. Nitrous oxide is the laughing gas. We had great stories about it in the previous video and it has abuse potential, of course. No metabolism, no pain, no pain. We use it in cases of trauma, tooth extraction, and childbirth. The chlorofluorocarbons, halothane, dysfluorine, isoflurane, etc. can lead to malignant hyperthermia. Oops, pungency and respiratory irritation because of the pungency. This is most likely with dysfluorane, which is absolutely disgusting, and least likely with sevoflurane, which is smooth. What if it irritates my respiratory system so much? Give opiates. Okay, medicosis, now I understand the inhaled general anesthetics. How about the intravenous gel anesthetics? Okay, you have propofol, thiopental, methohexatel. If they end in tail, they are barbiturates. You have ketamine, etomidate, and opiates. Let's say that I've decided to use one of these. Should I prepare the patient? Absolutely. What do you mean by prepare? Pre-medicate. Get the patient ready for the big thing. You can give midazolam, it's a benzo. Calm down, patient. You can give dexmedetomidine. What the flip is that? Dexmedetomidine. This is an alpha-2 agonist, therefore anti-sympathetic. Oh, calm down. No fight flight. No, 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 just calm down, just rest. Also, you can give atropine to dry out the secretions. Also, you can use suction. If you remember your last visit to the freaking dentist, they use suction all the time to dry out secretions. Anesthesia is general, regional, or local. This is the most important chart in the entire stinking video. Please memorize every single word of this. Not all that shines is gold and not all that wheezes is asthma. 
So what is the differential diagnosis of wheezes? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You will find the correct answers in the next video. If you want to master anesthetics even more, check out my CNS pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Not just anesthetics, but opiates, stimulants. Learn about sedatives, hypnotics, anti-Parkinson's, anti-psychotics, anti-depressants, and anti-epileptic medications. It is also paramount that you master autonomic pharmacology. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button you can support me here or here go to my website to download my premium courses thank you for watching as always be safe stay happy study hard this is medicosis perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense